Hi everyone, it's MJ. I'm coming to you on a cold, rainy, dreary day in our zone. Here to talk about a method of seed starting. Basically, this is forcing seeds that you would normally start in a seed starting mix. So today I forced some pepper and tomato seeds. Um, peppers notoriously take several weeks to germinate. And I have some tomatoes that are pretty old seeds. Uh, so I wanted to give those a try as well. And the thing about forcing seeds is that you're basically just trying to get the seeds to germinate faster than they normally would. It's also a good way to tell what seeds are viable and which ones are not. So in my zone, we technically have two summer seasons. We can start summer seeds in like April or May and then get them into the garden later in the summer and have uh, food all the way through frost. So I'm really not late, but I'm later than I would like to be this year. So I went ahead and forced some seeds. I figured I would track the process and see what happened. So I'm gonna show you the method that I use, and then we will I'll follow up with another video or two to see you know, what the process progress is. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box and let me know if you've ever forced tomato or pepper seeds or any other seeds using this method. Okay, so here's my setup for um, forcing the seeds. I have a bowl of water, paper towels, baggies, the seeds, and a tray. So I'll talk to you quickly about the seeds. These are from a pepper trial that I'm doing with Meg from Seed to Fork. Um, hot peppers, there's a paprika pepper in here. There's our peppers from my garden last year where I saved the seeds. I have a jalapeno, scotch bonnet, an occasion bell. And then here are some tomato seeds. So I grew these last year, they went really well. Uh, I've been searching for pineapple tomatoes. I finally got some seeds from Tam. She mailed those to me as a surprise. And then Tam also sent me these seeds. So because gardening is like super popular right now, most of the seed companies were really sold out. Even like smaller companies like to support didn't have too much that I was looking for at least. So I didn't get any new seeds this year besides the pineapple tomato seed. But Tam sent me some from her stash. So another good thing about forcing peppers, uh, forcing seeds, is that if you have a seed that's really old, you can see the dates on these. So the oldest one is 2014, a few from 2017, and these are from 2018. Um, if it's really old, it will take longer to germinate in general. And if you force it, you can pretty much tell quickly what is a viable seed and what's not. So that's one thing I'm forcing because I am not behind, but kind of behind. However, I would also try to force these older seeds anyway. They may take longer. Another thing about forcing seeds when it comes to peppers is that peppers take probably the longest to germinate of anything that I have ever grown. Sometimes three to four weeks before you see that pepper break through the seed start soil, uh, seed start mix. So forcing them to give them a head start so again, I started my seeds last year, February 18th, but in prior years, I've started in March and I was fine. I aimed for March 1st this year, it did not happen. So on March 25th, which is today, I'm doing this little project. So I thought it would be great to track the progress to see how these four seeds go. And that's why I'm making this video. So I will show you exactly how I get the seeds from here to in the baggies. One thing I forgot to mention is I have a Sharpie so that I can mark what variety I have in which in each bag and today's date. Otherwise you won't remember and you won't know what you have until it actually grows. So have a permanent marker of some sort to do this with. Another quick thing to note, I'm gonna have them all on this tray. This is a $1 tray from Ikea, I love it actually have a bunch of these my kids use for art. They work perfectly for when you're trying to contain water and things like that, and also for everything to sit on. A quick note, this, we know lots of plastic, right? I am the queen of reusing bags. 
but also um, I had to get a bunch of these for my kid for school. So we don't normally use them. There's tons. That's why I'm using them. But one thing Tim and I talked about is that you could simply get the seeds in a napkin, figure out some way to mark them. In that instance, I'd probably do like a piece of paper and tape or something because the Sharpie, you know, when it's wet, it probably will smudge. Um, and then set them in this tray and then use one big piece of saran wrap to cover it. In essence, you're creating a humidity effect, like a little dome type greenhouse, if you will, but without soil, seed starting mix. So that's a note in case you are not a fan of baggies or you don't have any, but you do have a tray that's rimmed, you can do it that way as well. I started by labeling four bags. Um, starting with the peppers from my pepper trial and then I'm just gonna you want to make this wet not soaking so you can dip it in the bowl of water you know loosen it out that's pretty pretty good what I should have done and I'm gonna do this in a second so I don't want all of my seeds to get wet but I should have gotten a little bowl like I normally do, taken some of the seeds out already, the ones that I normally use. And um, see, look, this is very well taped. So a little prep beforehand would have been better. Um, I'm gonna grab a bunch. So let's see. I'm gonna do, this is the Alma. This is the one that I wanna grow the most of, two, four, five, six, I think there are 20 in here, so I'm gonna do 10. That's more than 10 now. Yep, I'll do half the pack. Now, so here you have it. So I just fold it. I didn't plan this out. And I have my Alma. I'm gonna stuff it in there. You want it to be flat. So normally I use paper towel method method with my kids for the seeds that they are growing things like beans and peas even though you can direct sow those i like to do this as like a little project with them so they can see the process and i'm taking the ear out and i'm just going to seal it and that's that and we'll see how long it takes for them to germinate the key here is you do not want this napkin to get completely dried out so if you feel it, you want to get a spray bottle and just spray it to make sure that it doesn't completely dry out. And now I'm basically going to do that with all of these seeds. The rest of the peppers, I'm probably going to go with about six seeds. Um, with the exception of the Scotch Bonnet, I'm going to do much more of those. And that's because, uh, one, it's the Jamaican hot pepper. We eat a lot of those in our family and we put them in different sauce and uh, spice recipes and, of course, dishes. And so I grow those for my mom as well, my aunt, anyone who wants them. My uncle also grows the Scotch bonnets, so we have plenty to go around. But everything else, I'll probably go with six seeds. Um, the jalapenos, I am going to go with maybe eight or ten with the jalapenos. And again, it's because I use those traditionally in a lot of sauces um, and different recipes. So that's why. It's a very popular um, pepper in my repertoire. And I also like jalapeno in cocktails and in cocoa. <laughs> so that's, you know, just quick chat about that. With the tomatoes, like I said, I'm gonna do all of the tomatoes, the older ones, because I'm not too sure what is actually going to germinate. I also decided that I'm gonna go ahead and do some of these peppers in seed start, just so we can compare how long it takes for them to germinate. And not quite sure if I'm gonna do that with tomatoes yet, only because for my project I did with the kids, I have a bunch of tomatoes already started. Those are the only seeds I started. It's a project, a kit, so it's got a bunch of seeds in it. So I probably won't do any more tomatoes besides what I'm forcing here. Okay. 
Okay, I decided to be a little more economical and tear the sheets in half because you technically don't need that much of a sheet. I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. All right, I got my process a little bit better together. So I'd recommend when you start, label all your bags already. Uh, have all of your paper towels torn to the size that you want and put your seeds in the order that you're working in. So I'm up to scotchies. And again, um, and I didn't go grab the bowl, but next time I will grab a bowl so I can pour out how many seeds I wanna actually use ahead of time. I know some of you are probably like, why is she starting so many seeds? And that is because there may be a bunch that don't actually germinate, but also because I love to share seeds. And everyone doesn't prefer to start their garden from seed or doesn't have the time. Um, and I, I believe in buying plant starts. There's nothing wrong with that. But sharing seeds that I started, well, well plants, you know, because they'll be big enough to be plants by then, I usually nurse them until they're pretty much ready to go into their permanent container or into the bed that they are going to grow. The permanent bed where they're going to live. Um, my video got cut off, so I just needed to finish that sentence. Anyway, I have no, I had no intention of doing so much talking. So just go ahead with the process and I will show you the end result. station I have everything in the bags labeled this is normally a sunny window um, so I have it here I could also use my grow lights as well as my heat mat to assist I may do that for some of the peppers but I will keep you posted on how this goes fingers crossed we will have lots of germination so that we can then have lots of seedlings to grow in our garden and to share with family and friends so until the next check-in Thank you for joining me. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them for me. And until next time, continue to grow everything with love. Bye.